What is going on, everybody? It is David Palmer, the Leo King. It is Saturday, July 8th, and the full moon is coming to its apex. It is coming full. I'm sure you can feel it. It's in the air. There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of stuff to get to the bottom of, per se. Of course, Pluto's there, and for those that don't believe in Pluto, that's the whole thing. Pluto is hidden stuff. We even want to deny Pluto as a planet because Pluto brings up the stuff that we want to deny, the stuff that we're afraid to look at. And that's one thing that the science community is definitely afraid of is looking at Pluto. And it's interesting that this full moon's bringing Pluto up pretty intensely right now. And of course, I've talked about it in my live show. I did a, my weekend report on the app about this full moon. But since we're right in the middle of it right now, and it's been kind of a crazy day for me, to be honest with you all, I thought I would talk about it because Pluto has a very dualistic nature, like everything in the universe. But the dualistic nature of this full moon, not only does it deal with revealing and what you have not been able to understand because Pluto gets really upset if it doesn't understand it needs to get to the bottom of things it needs to r reveal and unveil but this full moon is really a kickstart into the new a kickstart into getting a lot of answers you got to remember that if you go back especially since the beginning of 2017 Finding answers has been a huge part of our whole entire year. We had the Saturn-Neptune square. We had uh, coming into 2017. We had the gnarly Venus transit in retrograde squaring over to Saturn. We had Saturn turn retrograde. We had Neptune just recently turn retrograde. We really have been in a, a very interesting place in our lives to where there has been this unknown element in our lives to try and figure out. And this full moon completes things. It completes facing fear. It completes going deeper into revealing answers. And it more importantly, helps you get back on track from the nervousness, from the fears of not having answers in your life. But even deeper than that, it goes into generalities as far as just being scared for no God-given reason, just, just terrified. But when you go deeper, you realize you're more scared of not being able to go, accomplish, or be at a place that you want to go. You're more afraid of whether or not you are going to have the emotional capacity to handle the intensity of the things that are coming up in life right now. And sometimes all we have to do is just go head first, get to the answer, express ourselves, let things out. And I think that this is all about release. It's about the release of getting to the bottom of your deepest feelings. It's about getting to the bottom of answers to physical questions in life, whether it's health related, whether it's business related, um, things that are uh, what, you know, your long term goals in your life. I mean, this goes into not only in the metaphysical plane, but our physical plane very extremely. And it's about the fear is released once you're not afraid to face it fully. You know, and I think it's been very difficult for people to face stuff. You know, it's been very difficult, but no matter what it is, whether it's a relationship you're not happy in, a business that you're, you know, wanting to get more answers on. This is also on the flip side of the positive, you know, getting to the bottom of the stuff that are really beneficial to you in your life and how you can even become better because Pluto always, especially in Capricorn, there is more to the story where you can get higher on the ladder, you can be better in your life that maybe you didn't even realize before. So there's a lot of that going on right now, let me tell you. The realization of how to be better at staying on track, better at taking care of yourself, better at going into where, you know, you can be better at 
life in general, how to take care of your life better, how to take care of yourself, how to be honest about all your emotions and feelings, and not being afraid to be honest with it all. You know, I think that we, we all have deep stuff that only some of us carry deep inside of ourselves. We don't want to show our friends. We don't even maybe want to show our lovers. You know, there's an integrity thing that comes with Capricorn. And we don't want to lose our integrity for our honesty sometimes. But what's ironic about this situation is the integrity is being honest. The integrity is coming out to, you know, what you really want to experience in letting people know how you truly feel and letting people know what's really going on, which I think is super important. I think it's the most important thing. There's a lot that people are afraid to face and it's usually just the most simplest stuff. Everybody wants to put on a show. Everybody wants to put on an act of everything's okay. Don't worry, I got everything all right. You know, vulnerability seems to be something that is what integrity is all about in today's world. People don't want to watch reality TV or television anymore where everybody's floating a bunch of crap in their face all day. You know, people want to see true vulnerability because even reality, whether we call it reality TV, the news, it's all sugar-coated to, 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 to put out some sort of message that they think we want us to hear. And a lot of this is connected with the South Node in Aquarius now, which is releasing and letting go of societies slash your perception of what you think other people want to hear, what other people need to hear, and what other people in general in society you think is, is the best for them or the best for you based upon their wants, their needs their perceptions there's a huge you know letting go of that right now in the soul learning to let go of the worry about what other people think because even though this is a capricorn full moon and there's so much capricorn and cancer and you'll hear it all over the place this is really getting ready for the major eclipse eclipses that are coming here next month and this is hitting pluto to reset things get to the bottom of your issues get to the bottom of why you are uncomfortable with the truth and uncomfortable with your power because really it is fear of power. Sun opposed Pluto is, oh, I don't know if I have that much power. I don't know if I should turn on the afterburners. It's a little bit like Top Gun turning the afterburners on, highway to the danger zone and being not afraid of using that. And yeah, everybody's all like, the YOLO full moon, that's what I called it, um, just recently, because I think this is a YOLO full moon. Like you only live once, but the fear of the power of yourself and what you can be doing with it is what I think a lot of us are facing. I think it's even deeper than that. It's the fear of the, the intensity of the next step in life you must take because it's almost like you gotta realize that life is kind of like steps and there's this major new step in front of you now and it's the fear of taking that next step, right? So I'm using Top Gun as the analogy, we'll stay there. So it's like at the very end of the movie, um, you know, Tom Cruise, right? Maverick, he loses Goose, he, he finishes flight school, Top Gun school, he doesn't, he doesn't win the whole thing but he's, everybody knows he is the best. And that's why they call him to go into war. And at the very end of the movie, he has to actually go shoot down enemy planes and protect his friends. But he's terrified because he's afraid of failing. He's afraid of not being able to do it because he failed one time in the past with goose and dying. And he, he, he's losing. He's afraid of his power. He's afraid of his intensity. And so there's this huge moment here where people are so afraid of their own power. They're so afraid of their own abilities to create the world they want, to create the power and change, to reach a higher level in their life, that they will choose an excuse or choose something that will, or more importantly, choose to deny the facts of whatever it is, right? Choose, like, like, like deny the facts 
that they can do what they are supposed to do so it's instead I don't want to look at it I don't want to look at that I don't you know it's son opposed Pluto is I don't want to look at that death I don't want to look at that darkness I don't want to look at what's under the ground I don't want to look at the bugs I don't want to look at the at the stuff I would rather get the raid out and I'll hire people to spray the raid I won't spray the raid myself and so you know this kind of brings up for a huh people really ready to you know, kind of do the deeper, harder stuff. Like, you just can't hire, you know, the insect people to kill the insects. You kind of have to go inside of yourself and realize, oh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Maybe I can find a way to save them, too, and push them out, you know. That's something that <laughs> Leanna would do. Well, As she, well, that you like to save insects and bees oh, and I do that stuff. All the time. Yeah, exactly. So, I think a lot of it for people is not being so afraid of whatever the issue is getting to the bottom of it and just doing it um i want to thank everybody for all their advice i couldn't believe it. i think how many comments were on the thing about my rib i don't even know oh God, what is so it many. why don't you check it out so i can because it was it was it was so insane i was like oh my gosh i can't even believe how many people or helping me out through my rib situation. And there was also people being like, don't race. And I get it. I didn't... 503. 503 comments of people giving me advice about my ribs. And this goes with the whole Pluto thing. I was... I didn't know what it was. So it hurt more, I think, because I put myself through this fear of, well, if I have a cracked rib or I have a fractured rib, then when I do race and it hurts... It could break more, or it could be worse, or if I fall off, what happens? Uh, I break my rib and it punctures my uh, lungs. That's what everybody's saying. That's what Google says. So it's like the only answer was to go get an x-ray today and see a doctor. Like that was the only, that's like such a Pluto thing. Like you must go and figure out the deepest thing and get the answers that you need in your life. And I did. I don't have a broken rib. I don't have a fractured rib. I just have a basically, what's it again? Sprained. Yeah, strained or sprained. Strained or sprained rib. Like, it's not even cracked. It's not even, it's okay. It's just the muscles and the tendons and stuff around it that are a little sore. And you know what? That's not going to stop me from my race now. Because tomorrow is a YOLO full moon, or it's actually right now. But this race is important to me. And it's a stepping step in my life of facing fear. And I'm going to go do it. I'm going to tape it up. And this cancer energy is making you find ways. So I went to Rite Aid, got, what's that tape I got? KT tape or something. I got uh, Tiger Balm, even though I had Icy Hot. I got, you know, wraps. I got Alpine Store Rib Protector. I mean, I got all this stuff to make sure that I could figure it out and get through it without being so fearful. And that's what this is about, this full moon. You... And I said, you know, I predicted this on Wednesday, or what, yeah, Wednesday, that people were going to get to this full moon and be like, oh, oh, I can't do it. I can't do something. And even myself, I was like, oh, I can't go race because my ribs. Like, I was really actually like, might not go down. And then, especially, there, there was 503 comments and like 200 of them was like, no, you shouldn't race, you'll, you'll mess things up, you know? And it was kind of like, oh shit, is this going to go on? Well... I had to go deep and I had to look for the answers and I had to reveal those answers. And once I got it, oh my God, it's like a feeling of release. Now, we're gonna switch tones here for a second because a great astrologer, you guys should check him out, Michael Erlewine just put up a post. Michael Erlewine is the man who created Windstar and he's the guy who created astrology on computers, the, the, the charts, okay? I studied under Michael Erlewine back in 2011 um, before I was fully an astrologer, um, like like you guys know today, and he put up an interesting post about the helio chart, which is something that I follow, but I haven't been following lately. So I would lie to say that I've been following the helio chart every day. I haven't. Helio chart is based off the sun at the center of the chart and the planets around the sun, not the Earth at the center of the chart. Well, in the helio chart, he brings up this. It's very interesting that within the next week, we're literally going to be having a grand 
cross Grand Square, okay? And it's interesting because it's with Mars, Uranus, Jupiter, and the Sun, or Earth, I guess you could say. You could put it there, too. And because when you... I don't think what people realize, if they've never actually looked at um, helio chart. Helio chart is what the scientists look at. They don't look at um, geo-based charts, unless... I guess they want to know what's on the ecliptic. But um, helio charts are what we look at to understand where the planets are around the sun. There are no retrogrades in helio. You got to remember that. There's zero retrogrades in helio. And so when you look at a helio chart, you're actually looking at the sun's view of the planets, right? Because the sun doesn't move, right? And the planets go around the sun. What's interesting is, to me, this is a higher level of consciousness that we look at to see, and I don't, I think it's even higher than the collective. I think the collective is geo-based since, here, I'm at a pool right now, and, you know, if you think about it, all these souls are still here on this earth. We're not on the sun, right? There's pretty girls here on earth. I'm here on earth. You watching this here is on earth, but up there... You know, there's a whole different view, and the sun is the projector of this reality. It projects. So it's almost like the scenes, the spirits, the higher dimensional ancestors, um, the guides, all of the illuminaries of light, the Palladians, the Arcturians, all of the things that you could really look at in this higher dimensional source are very much connected to the heliocentric chart and what's going on. Um, Michael also has done some really powerful work when um, you can actually look up your star type. You can actually look up and see what kind of personality trait you are out of four personality traits based off your helio chart. I have a freaking gnarly helio chart. My helio chart's even more incredible than my uh, geo chart, believe it or not. I didn't believe it until he told me and he showed me and I was like, holy cow. And he gave me a reading back at uh, UAC at U Unified Astrology Conference 2012 in New Orleans. Blew my mind. But what's interesting is I think that people need to realize not only is this crazy full moon happening here on Earth, but over the next week there is this grand square that is that is coming up, Cardinal Cross, in the helio and he actually made in his, you guys should go check out his page. He actually said, um, he looks at Grand Cross as like a womb or like a doorway. And I've always thought of it that way. I, you know, I think that it's the pressure to create the diamond. Uh, a lot of other astrologers say that. But I've always looked at it as uh, the Trinity. You need all four things. And even though Trinity is more of like a th third party aspect, it is kind of the holy uh, Trinity in all the tarot decks. Whenever you look at the world card, whenever you look at... Um, What's the other card with the four signs on it? The world card and the wheel of fortune. You know, those need four signs. They need those aspects. So I think after this full moon, this next week is going to bring us into radical fortune, extremely destined events. And even this full moon is triggering a massive destiny. And it's not yet. Yeah, the page is Michael Erlewine. Check him out. Send him love. Even say the Leo King sent me here to send love. He would love it. Honestly, you know, he's been around the astrology community longer than all of us combined. And he's my, one of my favorite astrologers. And, I, and if I can ever share any good astrological insight I get, you know, I will share it. And he deserves all that sharing of that Helio stuff that I've learned from him. I take it with the whole level of, I believe it's the level of the ar architects of the universe. That's something I kind of bring to it all. Uh, his last name's Erlewine, E-R-E-L, er, I'm really bad at spelling when I don't have it in front of me. Yeah, he, D Daniel put it, he has a bunch of PDFs. If people could put it in the chat for me, because I don't, I, I'm not chatting, unless I, um, Erlewine, there we go. I just posted it. Um, anyway, he brought up something very interesting about the Helio stuff going on with this full moon. Even though he didn't really talk about the full moon, but connecting with it right now and looking at the Helio was kind of interesting to combine the two charts. And, and somebody said, I wonder how you, your two charts combine. It's interesting. I think it's important for us all to combine our two charts, our Helio and our Geo. Um, 
if you want to do some really gnarly stuff astrologically, I believe if, if you're not ready to dip deep down into those deeper underworld layers, you know, don't get a reading in that way or ask for a reading that'll do that because it's too intense. Sometimes it could be too much. Sometimes it'll open up past life stuff that maybe you don't want to open. And, you know, there's a lot of that coming up right now um, with Pluto, which is past life stuff. Pluto doesn't really hold, I think, the keys to the past life, even though it is the underworld. I think it does hold where we, do, like, where we might have stored some past life failures. And that's why Pluto is in wherever it is in our chart of where we really need to repair, fix, and transform from. Because I'm a believer that Pluto honestly is like a holder of where we have failed and where we are transforming and where we need to rise again. So when you have a full moon on Pluto, it's going to bring up failure. It's going to bring up, oh, am I a failure? Especially in Capricorn in the sign of destiny. Like, am I a failure? Am I going to fail again? Is there a lot of failure that's going to come? I know who you are, Connie. I know who you are. Oma's doing good. Tante Elsa's doing good, too. Um, I saw him at my wedding last month. Um, but, um... You ought to look at Pluto in your chart. And how the full moon hits Pluto. And how it affects what's going on now. How do you feel about this, babe? This full moon? <laughs> uh, good. I feel good so far, other than that this is... What? I wanted a bite of this, and I just realized it's already eaten. Oh, yeah, I, I eat things. You just I've feel been, good? Yeah, I've been feeling good. Nothing's been off. Everything's been feeling good. It's just me that's been off. Yeah. That's why I give you Reiki. Yeah, my tooth broke. Again. Second temp crown in the same week that's broke. And you keep eating it. I keep eating them. Like, I'm going to add to my diet temporary crowns that I eat, <laughs> you know? This one broke and I didn't even freak out. I'm like, whatever. It's like, I can't do anything. Last weekend it broke. I went back into surgery Monday. It's like, oh my gosh. That one hurt though. This one doesn't hurt, so you're good. That is true. I, you know, it, just, it is what it is, you know? So... Oh, tell Sean I say, what up? Is he watching? I think so. Oh, what up, Sean? It's my brother-in-law. My wife does Reiki, so why don't you tell him the Reiki story last night? Oh, it was crazy. Okay, so I was doing Reiki on his rib last night, and usually it's pretty much the same experience with Reiki every time for me, but this time, like, I felt all of his angels and spirits there, and even mine, and they were kind of guiding me what to do because I let my hands kind of do what they feel like they need to do and usually it's the same thing I usually pull out a bunch of like black gunk from ch from chakras but this time it was like he had this like red energy that was coming from his rib and it was a very thick also very warm energy like it was very hot and so I was like healing that and then all of them just sent all this loving energy down me and it felt like my soul grew like this big I was crying the entire time like I had tears running down my face because of all the loving incredibly loving energy that was like going through me and then they just told me to wrap it in white light and I kept wrapping his rib in white light the whole time and then they actually told me to touch the skin because usually in Reiki you don't really like touch the person you kind of just move the energy but this time they were like no just actually hold your hands there and just keep wrapping it in white light so that's what I did all night and it was just really emotional and crazy so that was that experience never had that experience ever before never done Reiki like that before I'm telling you, but I just it worked. To the messages. I also had another healer, April, who gave a call to me and did some work on me. And then there was people also in the group that were sending out or in the in the comment section of the thing, like, "Hey, can I help heal you or whatever?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm like for sure. I'll open the doors up. Like, I'll take as much help as I can get. I got my tooth breaking. I got my you know my rib all messed up. It was just like, I'll take it, you know." And it really has worked. I mean, the turnaround in 24 hours has been amazing. Then to get the answer, you know, that I was seeking, which was to go get the x-ray and to have it not be broken and not be fractured was huge because at least when I'm jet skiing at the race tomorrow, which by the way, you guys, 
if you guys could send out all the love you can for me on this jet ski race, I'd appreciate it. It's pretty gnarly. It's 53 miles to Catalina and back from Long Beach. Non-stop, no breaks, just balls out there and back. So at least when I'm flying and I get hurt, you know, I realize it's not cracking my ribs, you know? So... Somebody asked, do we think we're soulmates or twin flames, babe? Um, I've never really, I never knew what twin flames was until I met you, to be honest. But soulmates, I think like people have like multiple soulmates. I think even friends can be soulmates in your life. And I think that we're definitely a type of soulmate because like, it's like you learn lessons from soulmates. So I, I feel like everyone has multiple ones, whether they become friends in your life or whatever. That's what I've always believed. And I think we're definitely one of those. Good answer. I, I felt that. So. I learned a lot from you. And the universe put us together like that. And that's what I believe happens in soulmates. It's like you can't control it. It just happens. So. That's true. It just happens. Yeah. In my opinion, I feel like, you know, when I have like really hardcore karmic relationships, I feel like those are soulmates, okay? Like where it's like, gosh, these people have been around every freaking life. With Leanne, it's interesting because when I look into my past life stuff, it doesn't feel like we've spent every life together. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I feel that too. Like there's a newness to her. So I feel like it's a third thing. It's not a soulmate because I consider soulmates like, you know, you learn really my, harsh like harsh. like my friend Chris Patecki I learned uh, astrology from like him and I've been through like every life together my mom and I've been through like every life together um, I have some other friends that have been through like every life together that all the soul garden crew that I learned astrology with and we all were together like we all have been through a bunch together um, but then it's like every life right but then it's like twin flames to me I don't know about twin flames because I think like like with her I feel like we're we're not very twinny. Like we no, have we're, so we're opposite, very opposite. But it also so, makes us get along better. So it helps us get along and it's like she can handle that and I can handle this in my life. So it's kinda like a balance. I feel like twin twin souls kinda I feel like they would clash a lot. Yeah, I feel like they'd be missing another part too. If they're a twin, then where's their other half that they both want? But unless Twin Flame is like... Maybe the Twin Flames half. make an awesome foursome or something. I have no idea. <laughs> but... I'm a Gemini. I have twins in me. Yeah, I'm I know. I'm a Twin yeah. Flame with myself. But, you know, um, so I think there's a third thing where I believe in... Um, future... I don't even know. I don't even know. I got to come up with a new term. It's kind of like... Um, future or like new karmic relationships. Oh, that's what I was going to say, but then I didn't you say know? it because I'm just like, not sure if that's correct, like, but I'm not going to say Like that. new karmic relationships. That's kind of the yeah. feeling, I guess. But apparently, so yeah, my, there's... Tar my tarot reader who's really accurate though, she's like the most accurate lady in the world. Like, sh she's predicted everything for me, like down to like the finest of details and the most significant events. Before I even knew that that was ever going to happen and it didn't seem like it was going to happen, I was like, what? Are you serious? That's not going to happen, but it happens. Um, and she told me, my last reading with her, right before me and David got married, she was like, oh, uh, you and David actually got married in a past life when she was holding my hands. And she's just like, you guys got married way back in the day in India and you guys were royalty and you're one of the first weddings when you got married on elephants or something. And she had an image of that. So I don't know, maybe that could And happen. then we had Rick Levine or Levine at our house. Do you remember yeah. that? Oh, and yeah. he had just done it, his first India tour yeah. uh, a couple months ago. He came over and hung out with us cuz he's a good friend of ours. And uh, he pulled up some of the elephant story. Some stories elephant, yeah, some uh, old some castle. some old castle of some rich Indian uh, couple, the guy built the castle and for was, his and, wife. Yeah, and he was, uh, and they were both like a uh, prince or whatever. Yeah, anyway, and, and it was like right yeah. when she was saying that story, and anyway, it was kind of cool. Yeah, and it was like, you won't believe what the next picture is. It's of the elephants that are in the castle. That yeah, they had the, and yeah, it was just exactly. Crazy. Yeah, so, yeah. So, anyway.
That was a weird confirmation. Maybe that was well, the only other life yeah, together. That's true. That's why I'm saying like soulmates kind of feel like they're there for every life where it's almost like maybe you, her and I are a karmic relationship that we didn't finish the job. Yeah. That maybe we're finishing the job. This life. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to go because my battery's like going to die and I want to save this and put it up on YouTube. Love you all. Thanks so much for all the support. Thanks for helping me with the rib. I'm okay. I'm cleared. I can't believe I'm going to go race this race tomorrow, but I'm going to do it. And uh, I'm going to face my fear. Trust me, it is freaking scary. But YOLO. And I'm not doing spiritual dance music because I'm racing tomorrow, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, someone asked me. You have anything, less, uh, anything left to say? Uh, well, I will uh, see you guys sometime soon. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what else to say. We'll be back with our yeah. vlog. If you guys checked out our vlog, oh, yeah. That's what Le David and Leanna Palmer on YouTube. Check yeah, it out. We got a lot of episodes. Catch yeah. up on the episodes. Not enough of yeah. you guys have and watched it yet. Exactly. And uh, also, we haven't posted one in like a week and a half, but I'm working on another one that's fun. Boom. All right, guys. Love you. See you later.